Now, we may not understand every part of the Word of God, but the Word of God is true nevertheless. Whether we believe it or not, it's still true. Tuesday night, I shared the scripture, and, and something was happening with um, a young lady in our church. Becky was, was having some problems. And, uh, I don't know if she wants to testify, ask her to testify, but we, we read the scripture that says, If anyone is among you suffering, let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Go to the next one. Next, next one. Is anybody you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. How many of you, when you're sick, you stay at home and hope and pray and hope you get better and don't tell anybody? I, I, I can handle this my own, Lord. I can do this myself. All right? How many of you are like that? Come on, be honest. How many of you, when you get sick, the first thing you do is call the church? Anybody? I know when you're sick, I don't get phone calls sometimes. But the Bible tells us, James, in his writings, tells us that if you're in trouble, you should pray. If you're happy, you should sing songs of praise. If you're sick, you should do what? You should do what? Call the elders of the church and let them do what? Pray over you. With what? Anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. And, and, and that's fine. What's it say? And the prayer what? The prayer of faith. Shall do what? Save. Save him that is sick, and the Lord shall do what? Raise him up. If committed any sins, it shall be forgiven him. <clears throat> One thing we do here, I've noticed, and we, it's my fault. We don't pray enough for individuals and use the scripture and stand on his word. That if you're sick, you should call for the elders of the church to pray. And I want to make this opportunity tonight for this morning. But first, Becky, do you want to testify briefly? I know it's difficult if you'd like to testify. I want you to just hear briefly from this young lady what's uh, God has done. And uh, I think you need to hear it. I told her, if you want $10 million, would you keep it a secret? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, on Monday this week, um, I was suffering a lot of chest pains. And on Tuesday, it was even worse. I had sharp pains. I couldn't breathe. Um, you know, when I would breathe, it would hurt really bad. And, um, I couldn't move my neck, couldn't move my head. Um, I asked, well, I told my husband I was going to go to the doctor, and he said he would go with me, he would drive me. And, uh, you know, when I was cooking dinner before we left to the doctor's office, I was, I was in pain. I was crying while I'm cooking our dinner, and I've never felt pain like that before. And he took me to the doctor. They did an EKG and they said everything was fine. And the doctor prescribed me Motrin. And um, my husband really wanted to go to Bible study that night. And he asked if I wanted to get dropped off or if I wanted to go. And so um, while we're driving home, we were back and forth on whether or not we should go. So we decided we should go. So we went and I was still in a lot of pain. And um, Pastor John read the scripture to me and Annette, Sister Annette, and asked if we wanted prayer. Well, I needed prayer, and I wanted prayer, and so he prayed over me along with everybody else, and he asked, he, while he was praying in my head, I'm saying, I believe, I believe, I believe that you can take this pain from me right now. Right now, I believe you could take this pain, and he took my pain right then and there, right then and there out of my chest. I could breathe without pain. I could turn my head, and I just, I didn't have words. I don't have words to describe how that felt, but I praise God, and, and I want to thank Sister Myrna and Brother Angel, and and you, Pastor John, and everybody else that was there because that really just opened my eyes. And I just, I can 
Anybody? 